All right, so how do you work with a weak base? If you're not familiar with weak acids and bases and how to identify them, and the background in why we use the icebox method, um, please see the link in the description box and it will take you to the uh, video tutorial that explains weak acid and base equilibria and the use of KAs and KBs in the determination of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion concentrations for the ultimate goal of finding pH or pOH. And the method that we employ for this is called the ice box method and whether you have a weak acid or a weak base it pretty much works the exact same way. For a weak acid you're just going to be solving for H plus for a weak base, you'll be solving for OH minus. And of course, this will give you pH, and the OH will give you pOH. But the icebox method is useful in determining weak acid and base problems. So let's take a look here at uh, this problem that discusses ammonia. And you should know that, of course, a base is any substance that either produces hydroxide ion in solution or is a proton acceptor. Now most people will look at this and think well it doesn't contain a hydroxide so it can't be a base but in fact this is one of the most commonly used weak bases and the reason why it's so tricky is because it camouflages itself pretty well. It has no hydroxide and so no one would assume it's a base but According to the definition, the Arrhenius definition to be exact, a base is any substance that when in an aqueous solution will produce hydroxide ion and NH3 when mixed with H2O will indeed form NH4+, the conjugate acid, as well as hydroxide ion. So because it produces this guy right here, this is considered to be a base. It is, however, a weak base because the ionization is significantly less than 100%. So, what method do we employ then to determine the pH of this particular base? Well, first of all, notice that we are going to be solving for hydroxide ion. And a hydroxide ion is going to give us pH. And after pH, of uh, excuse me, hydroxide ion will give us pOH and ultimately pOH will give us pH. So let's set up our ice box. I for initial change and at equilibrium and we're asked what is the pH of a 0.5 molar solution of ammonia. So initially we have 0.5 molar of the ammonia. Since water is a pure liquid it is not part of the ice box or the K expression. Ammonia currently have zero ammonia and zero hydroxide at our initial state. So the change we're going to lose from the reactants an X amount. We don't know. It's our variable. We will gain that amount in return in our product. At equilibrium, we will have 0.5 minus x remaining. And at equilibrium, we'll have 0 plus x of ammonium and 0 plus x, which is x of hydroxide. So how are we going to then determine what x is? x equals what? Why do we want to know this? Because x is equivalent to hydroxide. Hydroxide can be plugged in to get us pOH and ultimately pOH can give us pH which is what this problem asked us for. So as you may know we will need a K value in this case it's a KB because this is a weak base. This KB value you will either be provided in the problem or you can easily look it up in a reference manual or in a textbook and the KB value for ammonia NH3 happens to be 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So knowing that KB 
K, of course, being an equilibrium dissociation constant, is equal to the product of the concentrations of your products over the concentration of your reactant. So in this case, it is equal to NH4 plus concentration times hydroxide concentration over the concentration of ammonia. Again, notice since water is a constant, it is not part of our K or equilibrium expression. So, let's start plugging in some values here. We know that KB is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, because we could look that up. We know that ammonia, NH3, has this concentration. Ammonium is X and hydroxide is X. So we could easily plug that into our equation here. So ammonium is X, hydroxide is X, and of course ammonia is 0.5 minus X. Using the assumption method again, we could easily then eliminate X X being so small because the amount of dissociation of ammonia is so minute that X in comparison to 0.5 is pretty insignificant and therefore we can assume it to be close to zero or negligible. So we eliminate it only from the denominator of this fraction. X up here will always stay because there's nothing up here but X. So compared to nothing, of course, any value of X will be significant. But down here compared to 0.5, which for acid-base equilibria is actually a relatively large concentration, it's going to be insignificant. So we can definitely use the assumption method here. So let's go ahead and solve here. 0.5 times 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 will give us 9 times 10 to the negative 6, and that will equal our x squared. So we'll multiply that out and get x squared. All right, let's take the square root of this and get x, and we should end up with 0 0.003. x, of course, is hydroxide, so we can find pOH. pOH is equal to the negative log of hydroxide, which is 0 0.003, according to the calculations that we just did. And the pOH value then would be 2.53. Let's double check ourselves here. 0 0.03. 0, 0, 003. Take the log value of that, negate it, and there you go. Negative 2.5. So, this, however, is their pH value. What we really want, however, is the p. H. So pH is equal to what? We know that pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So pH plus 2.53 is our pOH value. That should give us 14. pH would then be the difference between 14 and 2.53, which is 12.48. Let's double check to see if we're allowed to use the assumption method. The assumption method, remember, requires us to have less than a 5% ionization. And in that case, we can assume x to be approximately 0 hence why we eliminated it right up there. So let's see, what is the percentage ionization of this, of this base? Let's take a look at how much hydroxide we had. Hydroxide concentration was 0 0.003. The initial concentration of this base was 0.5. Times 100 will tell us the, uh, the percentage of ionization. If it is less than 5, then the assumption method was appropriate for us to use. 
So it's going to give us approximately 0.6%. So that is much less than 5% and the assumption method worked. Had this been greater than 5%, you would not be able to use the assumption method. You would have to go back to the beginning and start all over again. So don't pass go, don't collect $200, but go back and rather than assume that this x is insignificant and solve out the problem easily, you would have to factor this out into a polynomial and use the quadratic formula to solve for x. The difference won't be very much, but a rule is a rule, and it could be significant if your, uh, if your calculations are very sensitive to changes in pH.